Hello, welcome to a completion out review of the Teal Designs Magnetic Drive Pry MDP. I love this tool. Since I got this tool a couple of weeks ago, received it in the mail, I've carried it every day. It's such a good tool and uh, we'll talk about why. A uh, little bit of a tool overview here. Uh, it is a pry bar with a relatively thin edge and then it is also a screwdriver with a magnetic bit driver. So if you take out a bit right here, it is a straight screwdriver, uh, but it also has a 90 degree slot right here. Love it. Very, very neat uh, design and the magnets just keep everything together really nicely. It also has a bottle opener and a pocket clip. It's a fairly basic tool. It's not trying to cram 15 things in or claim a bunch of stuff. It's just a really good screwdriver pry bar. Um, that I really enjoy. And now I don't even reach for my multi-tool whenever I'm looking for a screwdriver on a day-to-day -day basis, which is one of the more common tools I use, especially seeing how I have kids. And uh, that means I'm constantly opening battery compartments of various sorts. So the uh, comparison with some similar items. So here is a Gerber pry bridge, which I did a review on a week or two ago. So this is an interesting tool. I enjoy this tool. It has a box cutter integrated. The, uh, you know, the MDP does not have a box cutter, but at the same time, it's a really good tool. It's a great pry bar that does exactly what I want. Whereas the pry bridge felt like a box full of compromises, even though I really did like carrying the box cutter on this one that pry bar just didn't feel like a really great match. Um, in addition, we'll just throw it up against say a Leatherman Charge TTI here. So you can kind of see the comparison of the two. Uh, and then uh, here is my first pry, pry bar, which I had ground down myself. Uh, and so this was what I carried initially whenever I was trying to evaluate whether or not I wanted to be a pry bar person. And then uh, here we'll go ahead and compare it against a Sharpie because, you know, everybody's got a Sharpie around. So very similar in size to a Sharpie. <clears throat> the tool itself feels weighty. It weighs in with the bits for me, right about two ounces. So that's what I've got. These are the factory bits or the <laughs> factory feels uh, a little overstated. This is a, uh, this is a person working in Virginia who hand assembles these things. So, um, you know, it's uh, probably more of a labor of love and of business out of a small shop rather than being a factory operation. So let's talk about the excellence, yays, nays, and no goods of this tool. And then we'll talk about whether or not I'd recommend it, what I'd like to see in the next version, and we'll summarize it. There are uh, chapter marks in the timeline if you want to skip around. So what are the excellent things about this tool? It's a screwdriver that really works. It's an EDC screwdriver that really works. That is such a rarity. I've, for years, for years, I carried things like uh, 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 Leatherman and uh, you have the uh, screwdrivers that come with them where once you open them up and you get them extended, if you close them up, you have this awkward thing where you're kind of like half and half or you're kind of doing this, trying to get to a good angle. Like it's good, but it's not great experience. The, the uh, MDP on the other hand, this experience, once you put it into screwdriver mode, it feels like a screwdriver. Of course, it's not the most, you know, ergonomic thing in the universe, but it's plenty good for what it is. It is very comfortable. I have put a lot of force on this thing. I was a little worried about this assembly, seeing how it's kind of a three layer design. You have the titanium in the middle, you have a titanium front plate, and then you have a steel back plate here and a titanium clip. I was a little worried that using these two side plates as being kind of the tension mechanism to hold the bit in along with a, a magnet would might uh, kind of like cause it to spin or that I could bend these plates out, but I've applied a pretty good amount of force and not had a single problem. So I have no worry about the durability of this uh, screwdriver. The screwdriver really works. It's just such a rarity in a piece of gear targeted at the EDC market. Um, additionally, these are standard size bits. 
if I was someone where I was working with a particular size of Torx more often or something else, I could just put that in here and carry it with me instead. Um, the pry bar works as well as I could possibly expect with without having a fragile edge. So this edge is narrow enough that um, it has fit in the spots I've tried to uh, pry things with. So in comparison to another review I did, the pry braid, even though the, the uh, pry bar was okay, this tip is a little too uh, thick. And so I was never really able to use it as a, a pry bar. Whereas with this one, it's thin enough. I've been able to do things like split Legos. Now, not the like completely flush Legos, but the ones with a little bevel right on the bottom that come with a lot of kits, just pops them right open. Whereas I couldn't do that with the other EDC pry bars I've carried, except for the one that I cut myself, which was super duper thin. Um, it carries it carries the bits. Magnetic retainer feels good, and it feels really solid. This tool feels quality made. Great stuff. So let's talk about the yays of this tool. The clip has enough swoop to make it over most fabric. So whenever I put this into my pants or take it out of my pants or it, say a tail of knives holder or some other belt holder, um, it it goes right up over or it can uh, fit right in there and then I can push it down onto whatever I'm putting it on. I'll talk a little more about the clip here in a little bit, but that's great. The swoop is plenty to be able to not get caught on things as you try to get it onto different pieces of fabric or leather. Um, it feels like a tool you can maintain. You know, it's got a lot of screws. There's a lot going on here. I have not had the reason to disassemble this thing yet. There's these, uh, there's kind of the spacer for the clip. There appear to be either lock nuts or washers in there. Um, um, so there's different things going on in this tool. And even though there's a lot of screws, it feels very well built. It feels like something you can maintain. And I find the kind of like more industrial look of this tool kind of endearing at this stage. Um, I think that as the company continues to develop and refine their designs, I think there could be many less parts on this tool, but that's okay. The thing is, is this thing is still great for what it is and I really enjoy it and I like the design and everything is smooth enough and uh, uh, nothing has caught in my pockets or torn anything else up. Really dig it. Um, the uh, tool is made in the USA. Um, you know, sometimes that's just words, not in this case. This is a well-built tool using titanium and steel. Um, I have no doubt about the durability of this tool. Um, it has a great combination of tools. The pry bar screw, screwdriver combination is exactly the combination I would have wanted here. It's a good screwdriver and it's a good pry bar. Good job. Good job, Deal Designs. I love it. If you're going to refine, keep refining from here, where you've got a good combination of tools and the functionality is solid. So what are the nays about this tool? The number of parts, right? There's a lot going on here. There are screws to hold the clip on. Then we've got these uh, uh, little spacers. Uh, you have the washers or what look to be maybe lock washers of some sort. You have the titanium kind of core base plate in here. You have the titanium upper plate. You've got these uh, different magnets, magnets in here to hold everything in. It just feels like there could be a lot less screws and different parts of this. There's probably a way to re refine the CNC machining process to make this just more uh, less parts, more robust and refined over the long term. Right now, I think it's great, but I do have a little bit of a concern in my mind that over time, I'm going to find myself with screws backing out or something else. It has not been a problem. It's been completely solid, but um, I'll always be keeping an eye on it. I don't know if he Loctites these things or anything, but you know, who knows? Really great either way. Um, <clears throat> so the pocket clip tension is a little high. Like whenever I slide this onto things, it takes a fair amount of force. There's a positive to that normally in that 
by requiring a little bit of force, it's also going to take a little bit of force to come off. But at the same time, it's just a hair high. Um, it feels like often I'm kind of having to reach around and grab my pants or my uh, uh, belt holder and then kind of push it on there to, to keep everything together. I'd prefer this tension be just ever so slightly less, which would still make it effective, but not make it um, as tight. At the same time, I may just bend this clip at one point to loosen it up just a wee bit. So um, on that side, this, um, this tool, not everything uh, lines up perfectly, right? If uh, we look close, things don't quite line up exactly, right? The edges don't line up quite right when, or off exactly or precisely. Um, it's not a problem, but it's definitely an area for refinement. So the bottle opener might be the best place to see this. So if you could see up in there, there is the base plate of titanium, and then there is the outer two levels, and the outer two layers actually extend past where the base plate is ever so slightly. There's those kind of like little refinements that just could be get cleaned up. Um, it clearly feels like something that's uh, uh, kind of like a tool assembled with passion and care by someone who's still kind of like, I'm sure, CNC's and then hand assembles and finishes, tumbles, you know, does the uh, uh, final uh, finishing of the tool itself. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a break there. Um because of that, but uh, you know, it could still something that could improve over time. So uh, another nay is if the tool falls on the floor, sometimes the bits will kind of pop out. Um, and so if it drops real hard, one of the, I, twice now I've had a bit go boom and it goes flying off. Not a big problem, but it's, you know, it's, uh, it's something where the bit comes out at the same time. I love this magnet mechanism and unless they can figure out how to put even stronger magnets or larger magnets to try to retain these bits, I'm perfectly happy the way it is because the tension to get out the bits whenever you're doing it with your hand is still just strong enough. Um, if it was too strong, it might be hard or if they brought these edges up anymore, it might be hard to get the bits out. This feels the right balance and if it drops on a garage floor or something, Fine, I'll pick up the bit, no problem. Uh, luckily, they're not round, so they're not just going to roll away on you like uh, some screws and things. So that's good. Um, the price, the price. This was uh, seventy eight ninety nine. Um, like for for being a small shop product uh, made in the USA kind of hand assembled. I'm sure it has had a lot of work by the owner and they release these in small batches. I, you know, I can't really criticize that price. It would be nice to see that as it go, as they refine it and it, they can kind of up their assembly if they could either bring that price down or continue to refine the product so that it really drives that $80 price, that $78 price. That would be really great. I could see some people getting this tool today and looking at it and going, wow, 78 bucks. And it feels like something that, you know, someone just kind of put together rather than being something that's like very solid and uniform and feels like it's kind of engineered from kind of one or two pieces of metal and then stuck together. At the same time, I'm willing to pay it. And, uh, you know, quick preview, I've bought more stuff. So uh, I am completely willing to pay for the price for this particular tool and I feel it's worth the value. Um, the no good. The no goods of this are relatively few, right? It's got a lot of parts. There's a lot going on here. It really feels like there's got to be a way to reduce the number of parts on this thing and still maintain the functionality, the really good functionality of this tool. Um, the second no good and my last no good, bottle opener. Done with bottle openers. I'm carrying around three, four, or five bottle openers every day. 
there is a better thing you could do with this space. And uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Um, but I don't need any more bottle openers. Um, and, you know, good beer comes in cans now pretty often. So whatever. But if I do need a bottle opener, I'm sure I've got five of them in my pocket somewhere. So uh, let's move on from there. Would I recommend this thing? If you look at this and you go, that looks cool. This looks like something you'd want to carry. This is probably as good as it gets for this look, this more industrial looking object. This doesn't look like some, you know, modern uh, sculpture or anything like this. This looks like a tool, a tool assembled by someone. And I'm, it is a tool assembled by someone and I'm sure designed. There's a lot of TLC in here. Um, if you like this look, it's hard for me to envision how it gets even better. Um, screwdriver is great. It can take a lot of force. I put way more force than I expected on the screwdriver, and it did not fail while trying to screw in a screw. Um, and the pry bar is really good. It may be narrow, but for an EDC pry bar, that's okay. But this tip here and the way it comes down it's at an angle where I found it to be very functional. The few times I've had to use it, it's worked great. Um, and if I needed to use this for a scraping operation, I'm certain I could. Because even though it's ever so slightly rounded, it's not so rounded that I couldn't still scrape something with it. I would feel very confident with that. Um, so that's it. If you think you would love this thing, that, you know, I would recommend this, especially if you like the look of it. Um, it's, it's you know, well constructed. And if you do want to do your own maintenance disassembly, I know he sells other pocket clips. That's really great. I'm saying he, I'm assuming it's a he, but, you know, uh, apologies if I'm incorrect there. Um, so next thing, what would I like to see in the next version of this tool? This is all about refinement, reduction in the number of parts, you know, starting to kind of like really trim this down, kind of really, you know, get it, get it to a state to where it feels like a quality manufactured thing rather than something that's handmade. Um, there are a lot of small manufacturers out there who produce things that you say, wow, this feels super duper refined. And it may just be that the model of uh, this one that I bought, which I believe is a stonewash finish, it could be something else um, with how they describe it. But, you know, it could just be that the one I've got just with this finish feels more industrial and more tooly. But uh, I really doubt it. I, it feels like this is kind of like what it is. So I think there's a refinement here in the things like number of parts. Things like countersunk screws. So talking about refinement, you know, you got these screws here. Maybe they provide better, better holding and tension, but it feels like you could countersink a lot of this stuff and really start to refine this into a tool that's even more sleek and slim and more pocket carryable than it already is. And it's already a really good tool. Um, I would convert the bottle opener spot to a wire stripper or a nail puller or something else. It feels like you could extend one of these two plates out and turn it into kind of the edge or even this titanium core whenever you're kind of like milling it. Take it and turn it into something that you can use to get under screws and other things and apply that leverage or the uh, nails and things like that and get leverage on them. Like I said, a wire cutter might also be another function. You might be able to do multiple functions with extra space on this bar. Really cool. Um, so neat. But I think this bottle opener should go and it should be converted into something else. Something that would be just more practical whenever all of us have a keychain full of uh, bottle openers. Summary of this thing. In case you couldn't tell, I love it. It's great. It's a good tool. I'm going to keep carrying this tool. Eventually, I'll have to move on, but, you know, I'm pretty sure this one will come back into rotation pretty often because I really like this tool 
and I found myself using it way more than I expected. And with the screwdriver being so functional and feeling like a real screwdriver, that j and having the durability of a real screwdriver, that just made it a great tool to carry. I was never fiddling around with a Leatherman screwdriver or some other kind of compromise EDC screwdriver you might have. Um, great. I'm looking forward to see where Teal Designs goes. So excited about this tool. I'm excited about the future. I can't wait for a version two of this particular tool. Um, uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I appreciate it. Have a great afternoon.